Right, literally this video is just for newcomers to Twitch. If you're thinking about streaming, have you got any interest in streaming or becoming a streamer, you've seen, you know, these millionaire streamers and you want to get a piece of that pie, this isn't for you. <laughs> this is my personal 12 month experience with Twitch. How Twitch has helped, shaped and gotten for me um, with 100% honesty to you guys. Um, anyone who's curious to click on this video obviously wants to know what Twitch is like. And, uh, the best I can do for you is give you my honest opinion. So at this point I've done 12 months now. Basically want to break it down into bullet points for you. Bullet point one will be essentially that you don't need a stream deck. You don't need a HD camera, although it does help. You don't need the top quality mic. You know, I started with no cam, the bare bones mic. Um, I think I had a, a snowball mic um, as my original mic, which I got on with great. Um, I really did like the snowball mic, it's a good mic. It does involve some after editing, sort of post cleanup of your voice um, if you really want to upload it to YouTube. Um, I did used to use uh, OBS with a compressor um, add-on that would in enhance my voice and pick it up from a further distance. But as a first time streamer, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You know, you don't know where you're going. You don't know if it's going to be successful. You don't even know if anybody's going to come and watch. And chances are, you don't have anybody for a while. So the snowball is my recommendation for your first mic. You don't need a high powered PC. You don't need high powered internet. You literally would get away internet wise with between four and eight, you really want to be hitting. Eight is great. You know, that's, that's my little motto. Eight is great and 12 is superb. Um, 12 will allow you to stream at 1080 if you really wanted to. But again, Twitch only gives that 720, so it's not really beneficial to do 1080. Very few people are going to have internet connections where they're going to want to be able to watch you at that quality. Um, 720 is fine. You don't need to have the latest games. The latest games is not going to get you views. The latest games is not going to get you instant success. Yes, you may have one or two, you know, more people join your stream, but in a blink of an eye, they can leave. The most successful streamers that stream the latest games out are streamers that are good at the game. If you don't have a game that you're particularly good at, like me, I don't particularly have one genre or one game I'm good at. Um, I guess if I was going to have a reach at something and pull it out of a hat, it'd probably be Street Fighter. There's probably something that you're watching that's thinking, uh, I know what game I would you know, consider myself good at. That's your game. Whether it be popular or not, that's your game. That's where you want to be. Now, I tried um, a couple of times to avoid big release titles. Now, it's not always doable. Some release titles, obviously, you're going to want to play anyway. So you might as well go for it if that is the case. If you're just buying a game to get Twitch fame or to get more followers or to get Twitch hype on your stream, I mean, I may be doing it wrong, but for me, it's more about taking the group of people that click with me on a journey through what I want to play and what I think they want to see, more opposed to what will get me the most viewers, what will get me the most hits. So yeah, basically my advice to you is play what you love, play what you want to play and people will come. Twitch was a social experiment for me. It was, I didn't have many friends. I didn't have many friends, let's say, who were into what I was into. I'm into very much um, anime, gaming, weeby sort of stuff, you know? Let's be fair geeky stuff right so the geeky side of me something i had from way back when um, i will be doing a video on the history of the drunk so you can catch up with you know where i started gaming what i started gaming on and what got me into the love and passion for not just the art or the games themselves but everything around and surrounding gaming itself that video will be coming soon so back on topic you obviously need your main three things are decent audio decent internet connection and a game that you would rather play and have fun with your friends on a couch than a game that's the most popular game on Twitch. Your Fortnites, your, your 
Call of Duties, your Final Fantasies, all of those sort of popular games that can't come out. Everybody plays them for about two months and then it just goes dead. And there's a few, you know, fan favorite people sort of streaming it. You want to be those fan favorite people. You want to pick a game that you consider yourself good at. And that's your first game you want to start with. Or pick a game that you just love. Love to talk about, love to have somebody to talk about that game with. Um, and share opinions because that is what is going to get you talking on the mic and that is what's going to get you engaging with your audience not the latest game out because you think that's going to get you more follows or more views pick a game that if anything is a niche to you and then that gives you something different from everybody else um, i started with a game called titanfall 2 i'm sure if, uh, a lot of the drunks fans are familiar with that one um, it's where the drunk started um, Titanfall 2, I, I absolutely loved the game. I wasn't that bad at it, I was quite decent. Um, I've got a bit rusty over the, year, over the year, but that was my game of choice. I met some of my first viewers on there, viewers that are still stuck with me now, viewers that still come and watch me stream. Um, so yeah, Titanfall 2. So you will have a game in mind, well, as I'm talking, I hope, that you can talk about, that you can play well, or that you have something to say about, that's your game. Go with that. Don't follow the crowd, don't follow the hype. My advice is when you first start streaming, this is for first time streamers, stream what you love and people will come. You can always upgrade, yeah? You're never gonna go backwards, you're always gonna go forwards. The main thing with streaming is turning that stream on, pressing that button, hitting that thing and getting involved. If you don't have the confidence to press that button and, and just put yourself out to the world, whether it be with cam or not, then you're not ever gonna grow as a personal take on it. You're never gonna grow into a stream. Um, I don't consider myself a streamer yet. I consider myself a content creator that streams. I probably this year I'm gonna push streaming as hard as I've pushed it, um, if not twice as hard as I, I could ever push it this year um, because streaming is becoming my main go-to thing. It's what I think about, it's what I want to do, and it's where I want to be. And all of that came from confidence given to me by people joining, viewing, chatting, and giving me the confidence to say, no, we want to see you again. We want to hear what you've got to say, and we want to watch you do what you do. Everybody should have a niche when they start streaming, and that's impossible, because they're, they're, you know, personality, you're going to get people that are very similar and blah, 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 but bring your own thing to it, you know? Take your own game, take your own, angles of webcams take your anything it can be take your gimmick uh, look at dr disrespect basically the face of twitch you dress up as an 80s character from something like gi joe and, and literally just memes everybody that he comes across he insults everybody he kills that's his thing so have a thing okay moving along i think you've hammered home the point that you don't need the top equipment you don't need the best setup all you need is yourself, your voice, and a game. If you can get those three things out there at a reasonable internet speed of about four to eight, you're good to go. And that's upload, not download, of course. Okay, so you've got your setup, you're streaming. Whatever quality you are streaming in, you are live. Now, bullet point two is something that I feel is the most important thing next to actually getting the guts to stream, and that is community. When I first started streaming, I had one or two people come and watch me. Now those people came and watched me because I guess I had something that they liked, right? I don't know. So they came and they watched. I got a sub and I got a few bits and I thought, hang on, this is all right. How do I keep these people engaged? How do I keep these people coming back? How do I get these people to stick with me? And the answer to that question was social media, engagement. Talk to people outside of the stream. Let them know you're there. Let them know that you care what they have to say and give them a voice and share your life and problems and issues and ups and downs and roundabouts with these people. These people come to see you because they enjoy spending their time watching you. And what I feel is that I enjoy the fact that they enjoy that and I want to know what they've been up to. I want to know what each individual person is doing 
I want to know as many life stories as possible and I want to get a personal bond with each viewer that I have that is regular. There's no need to go over the top, you know, you don't need to be given out your address or anything like silly like that. And what I've found by doing this simple thing of getting yourself a Discord, getting yourself a Twitter, getting yourself a Facebook, all of these other social medias that you could get, Instagram, God knows what else, TikTok, I don't know. Get yourself whatever you need to get that you feel that you can actually commit to. Now I only commit to three things, and that is Twitter, Discord, and Twitch. YouTube, I use as a posting forum for videos and, and any content that I have the idea to do, I'll just post there and if people want to go and watch it, they will. I don't think that I do anything that other streamers don't do, but what I do do is bring honesty and commitment and trust. Now, people tell me stuff that they probably wouldn't tell their own parents, and I tell them stuff that I wouldn't tell my own family. Now, that bond gives you a relationship between your viewers. It becomes a friendship, it becomes a family. That's what I'm most proud of with my 12 months Twitch. I've met some awesome people, awesome, awesome people, and they allow me to be who I want to be by encouraging me to be that person. So I try and encourage them to do well in their goals, their life, and I generally take an interest in what my viewers are up to, what they're doing, how their days be. Now, if you can get that sort of relationship with your viewers, whether it be one viewer, you've already achieved the hardest thing to do. And that is build a community that means something. That's number two, and probably my most important, other than the fact that you have to stream in the first place. Moving up, number three, knowing who you are and knowing your type of stream knowing what you want to bring to the table. It could be that you dress up. It could be that you have a few drinks on cap. It could be that you're aggressive and abusive. It could be that you're the nicest, quietest person in the world. It could be that you've got a massive set of jugs. Whatever it is that you bring to the table, just make sure that you bring it. Whatever it is, just bring it. Because if you don't try 100% to be who you want to be, then what's the point in trying in the first place? Now, this has taken me about five to six months to actually realize who I want to be. Now I know who I want to be. I'm just trying to be me. <laughs> but I've got to get there slowly. And I understand that the, the crawl for an average streamer, for a, a general member of the public becoming streamer, especially in Britain. The, the Americans seem to have a, a lot more respect for the trade, a lot more respect for people doing stuff that's slightly not the norm. In the UK, we still frown upon the fact that people play games, collect anime, have a few Funko Pops knocking about, whatever it is. So the streamers that are UK based that make it, I have the utmost respect for those. But for the average UK streamer, and there'll be other UK streamers that will probably comment down below to agree with me here, it's not easy. It's so not easy. And the main thing you have to contend with are your parents' opinions, people and friends' opinions around you, the fact that you have to go through this whole rigmarole of paying tax on what you earn. So yeah, like I work a full-time job, and my main incentive for working that full-time job is that I can come home of an evening Strange. It's definitely not financial gain for me. It's, um, it, if anything, it costs me more money to stream than it would just sit on my backside watching telly in the evening. There's, there's a massive imbalance between what you see on YouTube and TV about streamers and YouTubers to what the reality is. Like I say, this, this video is trying to be as honest as it can be um, without you know saying anything I shouldn't say. Number four. Soon, when you get to affiliate status or even partner status, that you've made it and you're going to be, you know, this big time streamer. No, it doesn't work like that. It probably took me about two to three months, best part of three months, to become an affiliate. Uh, affiliate basically opens up the door for you to be able to hit, hit goals mainly that Twitch set. Also work up to partner status, obviously you have to hit affiliate to be able to work your way to partner. Now when you become an affiliate, you have a choice to make. There's a few boxes you have to tick and a few things you have to do. So the affiliate status basically opens up a whole new kettle of fish. 
and that is a video in itself. So if you want to see me do a video about the way that Twitch is run, what the earnings, um, how, how you go about tax setting up and agreeing to affiliate status and the things to look for and the things to uh, you know avoid with affiliate. And there's, there's a real hard decision to make when it comes to affiliate because you're going from a casual streamer sitting on your couch to a potential, I want to say millionaire streamer, but you, what it is, when you take that affiliate, you, you give yourself two paths. You're either destined for failure or destined for victory, regardless of how long that takes. So if you want me to do a video on uh, affiliate status, I can do that, no worries. I can do that for you. So hit me up in the comments and I'll do that video. Now, just because you have affiliate status or partner status doesn't mean that people will come and watch you. It makes no difference to you whatsoever. One thing Twitch does do very well is it doesn't promote the smaller channels, but it does give you the right to be there. You can stream with the big boys on any game that they might be playing and you will show up in the listings and people can click on you and they can come and watch you. And that is good because you don't have to be an affiliate to stream and you don't have to be an affiliate to build community, make friends and have a great time. Brings me to point four, have a great time. If you're not having a great time doing it, why are you doing it? That is the main thing. I enjoy gaming. I have a laugh gaming on my own. I, I always said I can amuse myself in a padded room. Now, instead of shutting yourself away in a padded room like I did for many, many years, let it out. Get other people involved. Have fun with other people that are like-minded and enjoy the things that you enjoy and have the time of your life streaming. It's what it's all about. And I do generally believe that success comes from hard work, dedication, and putting the time in and having something that makes you different. Now, if you've got those four things there, you can't go wrong really. It's what it's all about, it's why Twitch was started originally. And Twitch is a money-making machine and Twitch is a beast at the moment. It's probably, I would say, the third most watched entertainment option at the moment in 2018, soon to roll into 2019. And the fifth and final point, and I hope you listen, do not, I repeat, do not do anything stupid or irresponsible or what Twitch consider breach of contract breach of their rules just to please and gain audience. There's no need. If you, you could be the most humdrum voice, the most boring, plain Jane person there is, but as long as you're sitting there streaming eight hours a day, four hours a day, 12 hours a day, entertaining somebody, then Twitch sees you as fine. You will never have any problems. You will never see Twitch come up and send you any emails having a pop at you. And I've heard horror stories of people really going to extremes and even losing lives to entertain. And I don't know why they feel they're so unentertaining or that they have to get to the end goal of being rich and famous and, and you know, you know, Twitch famous and YouTube famous to put themselves in that sort of danger. People like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. End of, you know, have fun, enjoy it. It's a great platform to be on. I also, like I say, post to YouTube, so I do consider myself a content creator as well. This video, of course, will only be uploaded to YouTube and not Twitch, but Twitch I'll be streaming tonight. I do stream between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. weeknights, three, three nights a week, four hour shifts. And obviously you can follow us down below with the subscribe button, ring the bell, ding a ling, Get that shit notified to your phone as and when we release content. And I love you all. See you all later. Bye bye.